In this video, we're going to look at finding the area under a curve. By that we mean, let's suppose that we look at a function and we're looking at the curve of the graph of the function. Suppose that this is a point on the x-axis. And that this is another point on the x-axis. Then finding the area under the curve means that we're looking for the area between a and b that's bounded above by the function by the x-axis here and by uh, a and b on the left and right sides. We've studied areas in the past, but we've looked at things like rectangles, where the area is the width times the height, or the area of a triangle, where the area is one-half the length of the base times the height, or the area of a circle, where the area is pi times the radius squared. Any other areas that we've ever found, we've cut up into pieces so that we could use those other formulas. We'll use a limiting process here and use something called a Riemann sum. Suppose that we cut the interval from A to B into n equal pieces. Here we've cut it into four equal pieces. On each of these sub-intervals, let's find two x values, one that produces the maximum value on that interval, and one that produces the minimum value on that interval. I'll use m1 to represent the x value that produces the maximum value, uh, capital M1, and the lowercase m1, the x value that produces the minimum value of the function on this interval. We know that on any closed interval, there will be a maximum and a minimum, and the maximum will be at a critical value or at one of the endpoints, and the minimum will be at a critical value or at one of the endpoints. In this case, the minimum ended up at an endpoint, and the maximum ended up at a critical value. We'll do that analysis for each of the intervals. In this case, I've created the, re the uh, maximum rectangle uh, in red and the minimum rectangle in green. Let's do that for the rest of the, uh, of the segments. In the second segment, the maximum occurred here and the minimum occurred here. So there's our minimum rectangle and there's our maximum rectangle. In our fourth segment, the minimum occurs at a critical value and the maximum occurs at the right-hand endpoint. Now we had divided the segment AB into uh, an equal number of pieces and they were the same length each one, so I'm going to call each of those delta x. Now we could find a too big estimate by adding up the height of each of the maximum rectangles times that dx. So it would be that red area, that red area, that red area, and that red area in this first case. And that's guaranteed to be too big. We could find an estimate that's guaranteed to be too small by looking at the the x value, that, uh, the height of the function, the smallest on the interval. So the sum of these uh, green areas is going to be an area that's too small. The point is the right answer is, is trapped between those two somewhere. Now look at what happens if we subdivide each of these uh, previous subintervals. I subdivided each one of them in half, and so now we have eight subintervals instead of four. Now notice what happens. If I start to build rectangles, the rectangle here, the largest rectangle, because now the maximum has moved down on this part, so I've got this new red rectangle, I've got this rectangle, here, the maximum here is going to be right there. We've got that one. And this one, notice that it got smaller than what it was before. And this one, the maximum would be right there. And 
and the maximum here would be here, getting quite a bit smaller than what it was before. Now the maximum here is right there, and the maximum on this one is right there. So now the sum of those new red rectangles is less than the two big estimate that we had before. But look what happens when we examine the green, the, the too small. This one was this piece, but now this piece, see the sum of this rectangle and this rectangle is going to be more than, this, than uh, the single rectangle that we had before. The smaller rectangle begins to get larger. The, the too small estimate begins to get larger. So as we continue to subdivide, the too small estimate keeps getting larger, the too big estimate keeps getting smaller, and the right answer is stuck somewhere in between. So what we're going to think about is just picking any x in the, in the subinterval, finding the height, the function at that value, times the width of that little rectangle of that uh, subdivision. And then adding all of those up, we know that this answer will be somewhere in between a too big estimate and a too small estimate. Now, in each of these cases, we were looking at, at n subdivisions. So we are letting this i value run from 1 up to n, and we're picking an x value in each one of the subintervals uh, to estimate the area by building those rectangles. This is called a Riemann sum. So what we'd really like to do is, is think about subdividing more and more and more and more uh, so that n is going to infinity and adding up all of those rectangles. Leibniz invented some notation for this concept. He used a big squiggly line that reminded, reminds us of a sum, and we want to sum from A to B. And here we're looking at rectangles. The rectangle is going to have a height associated with the function at any one of these little rectangles. The width, as this, as n goes to infinity, that width, delta x, is going to become infin, infi, infinitesimally small. So this is a rectangle, and we're going to add up all of those infinitesimally width rectangles from a to b. And that's going to be exactly the area in the limiting process. This kind of thing is called a definite integral. And we're going to look at how to calculate definite integrals. But we'll do that in another video.